You know, building up to some of my favorite college courses like neurobiology, I loved my job of traveling around to clients, teaching students, coaches, how to go about learning some pretty sweet ninja-esque moves. A couple years in, I came to realize that the biggest thing I did was teach people how to go about learning, and most importantly, how to enjoy it. So we're gonna go over three major things that I would do to people that actually make your brain associate work that most people think sucks with actually being fun day after day. Hello everyone, welcome to Trick Theory. This is certainly a magic trick that some people just seem to have, while others wonder why they don't feel like jumping out of bed, going for a 4 a.m. run, and then downing five dozen eggs raw every day, let alone just one. Starting off swinging, the big thing to understand for this episode is understanding a lovely little brain chemical we've all heard of called dopamine. But it's not quite what all of us are told about in high school. Nowadays, we've all heard that opening up your cell phone and watching a funny video, eating a donut, playing video games has been not just tapping into, but essentially hijacking your dopamine system to make you outright crave doing more of these things. That dopamine is the feel good or reward chemical. And while this hijacking is absolutely true, dopamine isn't exactly what we've been taught to think. Not being as much of a reward chemical as it is a a motivation chemical. So while we tend to think of dopamine as something that only comes at the end, it can be the exact opposite. You see, dopamine is truly the mastermind inside your head that initiates the action in the first place, puppeteering you to get up and seek out a snack, a person, even work out or engage in difficult tasks if you know how to control it versus it controlling you. Cause this guy is what keeps you engaged, focused, motivated, anticipating your reward until the deed is done. So knowing that dopamine is what actually gets the party started in the first place, exactly how do we leverage it to our advantage? Well, this involves you having to engage in the activity you might not care to do at least once. And above that, your perception. Otherwise, the thing that separates those who keep going from those who throw in the towel early. When I showed up at a gym or school teaching things like a butterfly, corkscrew, even basic biology to a few eager your private lessons, I would find that a few people were excited, already having an expectation of the reward they would get for showing up, while often most others were wary and rather skeptical of how far they could go. Despite their differences though, both of these groups had the same problem. However, the same problem means that they also had the same solution. Since dopamine is a chemical of anticipation, our perception of how long it's going to take to get the reward we happen to be focused on dictates if and how much dopamine gets released. And this is where my trick for getting most students to go from either side they stood on to becoming die-hard fans came in. You see, whether I was asked for a specific skill, or in better cases for newer students, I got to choose the skill, the first thing I would do is outline a path. I would talk about how each step on that path, rather than being insignificant, was super important in its own right, was a thing to be admired just as much as the end goal they saw. Want a one leg twisting backflip? Well, let's get you this weird move called the Donut Boy that we can turn sideways and morph into the backflip. The most crucial part of this whole process, though, was each time someone would start to get a handle on whatever attainable step I had set their sights on, I would applaud, give out numerous high fives to the point that many students began to eagerly expect them, sticking out their hands towards me whenever they made any progress. And essentially, I shifted people's perception. I got them to anticipate a reward for each and every smaller step as a goal in its own right, instead of just the big one. But this isn't even the best part. I'll also point out the fact that through this process, I wasn't lying to anyone either. Each step on the path towards their big goal was more important than they realized, and I just got them to see that. The best part was that something even bigger began to occur in many of the students students that I did not see coming. This tricks your brain into an everyday flow. Keeping it real simple, flow state has been described as the brain entering into a deep focus, a complete immersion and enjoyment of an activity. It often occurs when the challenge of a task matches an individual's current skill level, thus creating a balance that keeps them engaged for long periods of time without them getting overwhelmed or bored. 
Personally, I found that students tend to lose all sense of time and have a lot of fun working to the point that they don't want to leave. To achieve this flow state that some could truly call the pinnacle of you enjoying doing something, the conditions that must be met are two things. One being a clear next step that can actually be accomplished within a few attempts before moving on to the next one. And two, immediate feedback, either in the form of you seeing what didn't work or a nice dopamine triggering high five from your favorite teacher upon completion. But unfortunately, there's one major problem with this. A crucial detail that really tends to stop most people. You see, motivation by itself is kinda useless. Motivation can be split into two categories, one being extrinsic motivation that involves rewards like praise, money, recognition, even fears of getting a bad grade or avoiding punishment, and then in intrinsic motivation. That involves personal interests, curiosity, values, and beliefs, while extrinsic motivation relies on external things that certainly can motivate you to get up and go, it really is much better in the short term, and not to mention is reliant on something else that may not always be there. However, intrinsic motivation comes from within, where the individual is able to tie their sense of accomplishment, their dopamine to the skills, the growth, the internal rewards they get along the way for leveling themselves up as a person, which does work well in the long term. But as we said, there is a catch to all of this. Motivation by itself often isn't enough to truly start doing and enjoying anything. Because for anything you want to do, you have to start whether or not you feel like it, and then we can make it feel good. Imagine someone who's never been to Disney World. This person may have unrealistic expectations for what to expect expect, or like many adults, be rather skeptical. It's only after receiving constant rewards for every ride they go on, hearing the music, the smells of food that surround them as they walk through the park, all of these little rewards they get the first time cause them to completely change their behavior for when they come back every time from then on. This is also why as a teacher I needed to deliver a great performance the first time, pointing out all the small rewards nervous and skeptical students students alike got the first time they came to me, and then keep up that expectation from then on. Cause let's talk a little bit about the brain. What's really happening here is that shifting your focus onto all of these tiny rewards, whether it's via a teacher or a major theme park does, is use the constant release of small amounts of dopamine to rewire your brain. Because dopamine is one of the few magic chemicals that can force your brain to change, literally making it create and strengthen than any neural connections that are associated with the urge to start, focus, problem solve, along with ones associated with things like grit, perseverance, and resilience in the face of setbacks. And this gives you an incredible trick to crush one of the most famous tests out there. I would bet that by now many of you have heard of the famous marshmallow test conducted by Walter Mischel in the late 1960s that continued into the early 70s, a test where children children, typically aged 3 to 5, were presented with the choice of eating a marshmallow now or waiting some 15 minutes where they would then receive two. Upon following up on these children years later, Michel and his colleagues found that the children who were able to wait the 15 minutes and delay gratification performed far better in life at things like academic performance, health practices, but you see here, while this test does show that being able to delay immediate reward is a great skill to have, you can actually bypass this whole thing. Cause if you develop the skill of giving yourself a reward in the meantime, realizing that you may not have gotten a backflip day one, but you sure as heck got a sweet donut boy or cartwheel in the process, you can choose to give yourself your own special little marshmallow while waiting for the big one. However, this still leaves us with one big elephant in the room. One thing that just kills everything, even more than how the instant learning now students and parents would kill the mood of a class, the word of warning I should give you is you should be very careful of over-celebrating. A common pitfall of people who just want to make themselves or someone else feel good that leads to a nasty thing called dopamine hangover. You see, while moving in steps and entering into a flow state is characterized by the steady release of the dopamine inside your head as if it was running a marathon, over 
for celebrating, going out for a night on the town, partying hard, running up and down the street, screaming at the top of your lungs for joy, is instead something of a sprint for your dopamine. It literally uses up all the reserves you have at once. And not only will you find that you really have no motivation and can no longer physically concentrate, but what's really sinister is in order to get your mojo back, a rebound, a hangover has to happen. You see, for every spike that occurs upwards, an equal spike occurs downwards. One that leaves you feeling little to no motivation or pleasure from anything. Even worse is if you continue to spike your dopamine over and over again, your daily baseline doesn't always recover back to normal. Instead, it drops, it plummets to a new low, making it harder for you to feel like pursuing anything that takes much effort. Even the tiniest steps of progress that once thrilled you now become unappealing at best. Cause taking a look at the brain, both the dopamine reserves your brain has to pull from to puppeteer it into action gets smaller, and the receptors inside your brain that catch the dopamine causing it to feel motivated become downregulated. These dopamine receptors become less excited by any dopamine that touches them, and now they require a lot more to feel the same level of excitement. A true problem when you have even less to work with. And this can be heartbreaking, cause instead of pursuing their goals through manageable steps, these individuals often either try to shortcut towards the end, beelining straight towards that big dopamine spike that awaits them, or they drop their goals altogether. Choosing to go out in search of things like alcohol, gambling, get addicted to quick surf social media, even large amounts of junk food high in fat and sugar, all to give them that big spike. Even worse, these massive spikes are often extremely short-lived, with the brain quickly returning to its low baseline status. If you think that this may be you, then have no fear. You really should avoid stacking or layering dopamine boosting activities on top of each other. Instead, choosing to moderate your releases via lowering and sometimes replacing activities, like reading a book instead of doom scrolling, walks or yoga versus 12 straight hours of editing the home stretch of this video, and tea instead of energy drinks. Then you can shift your focus to the progress, the skills and steps you gather along the way towards a larger goal, which will cause you to become excited each time you go to do it. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. To stuff all of this into one practical thing that you can start doing right now to enjoy pursuing your goals is a thing known as the Goldilocks Zone of Difficulty, an idea that suggests people are most engaged and find the most satisfaction in tasks that are neither too easy nor too difficult, but instead are challenging enough to push their skills without being overwhelming. I hope this was useful, and remember, it's just a trick to help you. See you in the next one.